Hello, in the tutorial series on Neo-Riemannian theory, this episode is about third-order compound Riemannian transformations. In the triad Tonitz diagram, these correspond to a path with three moves. We'll study the six possible transformations in major and minor, evaluate the Schillinger road cycle patterns and the equivalence between major and minor key transformations. Two example chord progressions with third order transformations only are turned into short compositions. You may be interested in the practical application of Neo Riemannian theory and chords moving through the triad Tonitz diagram. In this episode, the focus is on third order compound Riemannian transformations. We'll study these in major and minor and determine the corresponding Schillinger diatonic and symmetric system root cycles. You will see two chord progressions with third order transformations only and how using the instrumental forms concept turns these into example compositions. Let's revisit the preliminaries. In the triad Tonitz diagram, the chromatic scale pitch classes are depicted at the nodal points. The connecting vertices enclose triangles containing major and minor triads, shown here on root C. Due to octave transposition redundancy and enharmonic equivalence, you'll see multiple occurrences of any triad. For more on these Neo Riemannian theory features, see part 1 in this tutorial series. Chord progressions through the tonets have a narrative value. When used in opera, symphonic poems and epic film music, they will trigger an emotional response, a subject discussed in extenso and demonstrated with many examples in the 2018 book by Frank Lehmann on Hollywood Harmony. When connecting triads, we discern three elementary Riemannian transformations, parallel, relative and leading tone exchange, shown here. These involve diatonic root movement and two common notes between triads. The chord type changes from major to minor or the reverse. The triad type does not change for compound Riemannian transformations, a pairwise combination of the simple P, L and R operations. For these the roots move by either 3 or 4 semitones and the triad combinations are called chromatic medians, since they do not occur in diatonic scales. The two triads share one common note. We adopt the root cycle concept as proposed by Schillinger for diatonic and symmetric harmony systems in his system of musical composition. If you are new to the Schillinger harmony, this episode on my channel may serve as an introduction. Projecting the root cycle patterns on the Tonetz diagram, we find diatonic system root cycles in the horizontal direction, with positive root movement, that is descending thirds to the left, Symmetric system root movements by either 3 or 4 semitones lie in the diagonal direction in this diagram and are shown here as red arrows. This diagram is a rather complicated overview that we will dissect during this video about third order compound Riemannian transformations. These are created as three element series from the elementary P, R and L transformations which corresponds to a path with three moves in the Tonetz diagram. Shown here as an example is the move from C major to C sharp minor, which implies a three-step LPR path. We may start third order transformations from either a major or minor triad. We see that there are multiple options, which all have in common that the triad type will change from major to minor or the reverse. Let's now have a closer look at third order compound Riemannian transformations in major. From the starting triad C major with three elementary moves, we may land on the seven colored triangles shown here. When taking into account the enharmonic equivalence of A flat minor and G sharp minor, the total is six options. The options are shown here in staff notation, with the upper three having a common pitch and the lower subset without overlap. The one note overlap may lead us to either the F minor, G minor or C sharp minor triad. Overlapping notes are the chordal functions root, third and fifth in the starting triad C major. The four non-overlapping options are the four green triangles, 
With stepwise voice leading examples shown here in staff notations, we will interpret third order Riemannian transformations in terms of diatonic and symmetric system root cycles as we study each individual option in greater detail. In the tonettes, we may move from C major to F minor in three steps. The common pitch is C, the root from the starting triad becoming the fifth in the target chord. And now we see another fundamental aspect of third order compound Riemannian transformations, namely that two alternative paths may lead us there. One is the PLR trajectory from C major to the parallel C minor, then to A flat major through the inverse leading tone transformation and followed by the relative minor move to F minor. Alternatively, shown here as a dashed arrow, we may take the road from C to the relative A minor, followed by the L transformation into F major and finally arriving at its parallel minor F minor. This corresponds to a Schillinger diatonic system positive root cycle R5 as the root descends by a fifth. This chord connection occurs naturally as a dominant tonic cadence in F minor and therefore does not create unexpected or special harmonic interest. The voice leading shows that we need two semitone steps to arrive at the target chord. Let's listen to this first option. The same holds for the second option, connecting C major with G minor through either the PRL or LRP transformation. The common note now is G, while this move corresponds to a negative Schillinger diatonic root cycle R-5. And we may find these when moving from the 5th to the 2nd degree in major. The smallest total voice leading effort now involves 4 semitones as the root and 3rd descent. Again, nothing special happening here. In option 3, when the common note is the pitch E, things definitely become more interesting. We are connecting C major with C sharp minor, either through the RPL or LPR transformation. Now here's a connection that does not occur in diatonic harmony. We are entering new terrain with a symmetric harmony system root cycle R minus I, as the root moves up a semitone, and we see a parallel perfect fifth in the voice leading. This transformation has received a special label, it is called the slide transformation and is discussed in David Lewin's book and has been used frequently by Sergei Prokofiev in his neoclassical style compositions. The first non-overlapping connection is between C major and A flat minor, the upper left green triangle or its enharmonically equivalent G sharp minor in the lower right corner. We may get there through either the PLP or LPL transformation, while we see a case of Schillinger symmetric system 4 semitones down road cycle. You will not find this set of triads in a diatonic system and this reminds us of the chromatic medians we saw in part 1 for two step compound transformations, where, however, the triad type did not change. The stepwise voice leading requires a total of three semitones. The second option without common notes is the connection between C major and E flat minor through the PRP transformation. The root moves up a minor third, while the total voice leading effort now is four semitones. The final option in major is the non-overlapping move from C major to F sharp minor, the green triangle in the lower left corner, applying the RPR transformation. Note that the roots lie a tritone apart and therefore the Schillinger root cycle is the 6 semitones pattern. This connection also shows the maximum total voice leading effort thus far, involving 5 semitones. You should by now be familiar with the analysis approach and we should be able to move quicker when considering the options from a minor triad as starting chord. 
Again, the total set includes six options when taking into account the double occurrence of E major in the tonettes. In the overview and staff notation, we see the three common pitch options at the top, the non-overlapping third order transformations at the bottom. The single common pitch options go from C minor to either B, F or G major. The common note is either the chordal function root, 3 or 5 of the starting triad as shown here in staff notation. The non-overlapping options lead to the major chords on roots E, F sharp and A, the light brown triangles in the tonettes diagram. And again we see the smoothest possible voice leading in staff notation at the top. Let's move on to the individual options. Both the PLR and RLP transformation yield the target chord G major. The common note is the pitch G. The Schillinger root cycle is R-5 and we may encounter this transformation as a standard 1 to 5 half cadence in minor. Voice leading involves two descending semitones. The other diatonic option brings us from C minor to F major, through either PRL or LRP. The common note is C and we may find this in diatonic major as a 2 to 5 chord change, a strong positive root cycle R5. Total voice leading effort is 4 semitones, a traditional chord change without added harmonic interest. In minor there is also the slight transformation RPL when going from C minor to B major with common pitch class D sharp or E flat. Now we are entering the symmetric harmony system with the root descending a semitone and the voice leading yielding a parallel perfect fifth. The first option without common notes is the PLP or LPL root from C minor to E major, occurring twice in the tonettes. The root moves up by a major third, four semitones, another reminder of the chromatic median type of chord connection. In the voice leading each part is moving by a semitone. Option 5 uses the PRP transformation, landing on A major in the lower left corner. This is the Schillinger root cycle R3i and compared to the previous option, the total voice leading effort is an extra semitone, so the stepwise connection now requires 4 semitones. The final option has the roots at the tritone, the 6 semitones interval as we move from C minor to the highly contrasting F sharp major. This RPR transformation involves 7 semitones in the voice leading shown in the staff, the highest number so far. What you've seen in the fundamentals of third order compound Riemannian transformations is the separate treatment of the 6 options in major or minor, adding up to a total of 12 transformations. However, you may reduce the complexity of this set by considering the equivalence between major and minor. We do that by looking at the root cycle patterns for the various options. Doing so, you will obtain a reduced set with a total of 6 transformations. Here we observe the first equivalence, nicely visible as the geometry of the triad connection pattern in the tonettes diagram. Starting on major, the PLR transformation corresponds to diatonic R5 and we land on F minor. In minor, the same transformation leads to G major, at a diatonic root cycle R-5. The retrograde of this operation is the transposed version of the pattern in major and therefore these are equivalent. Observe the same geometric similarity for the second diatonic third order transformation PRL. Again, through reversing the transformation path in minor, we get the transposed version of the major key pattern, 
So going from C major to G minor is equivalent to the R5 move from C minor to F major. And here we see the slight transformation in either major or minor. The symmetry in the tonets is obvious, with the major triad root a semitone below the minor chord. So here's the third equivalence between C major to C sharp minor and C minor to the major triad on B. The symmetric root system options with non-overlapping triads also reveal similarity. Here we see the triads with roots at the interval of the minor third, along a diagonal in the tonets. The PRP transformation demonstrates the equivalence between C major to E flat minor and C minor to A major. The four semitone symmetric root system implies similarity along the northwest to southeast diagonal. Applying the PLP transformation in either major or minor yields the equivalence between the C major to A flat minor and the C minor to E major triad connection. Finally, here's the equivalence for the symmetric root system tritone related triads, more widely separated in the tonets. The RPR transformation connects a major triad with a minor triad at a root interval 6 semitones apart. What we've achieved is a smaller set when taking into account the root interval characteristics in third order compound Riemannian transformations. The equivalence property reduces the total set to just six options. It is time for a challenge. Let's try and write an example composition that is based on a chord progression that uses third order compound Riemannian transformations exclusively. We'll start with a chord progression design in major once again with root C. The 14 measures long chord progression in four parts, shown here in staff notation, contains four of the six options for a third order transformation. It opens with the symmetric root system move from C major to A flat minor through a PLP transformation. In measure 5 we find the R6I root cycle towards the tritone related minor triad F sharp minor. In measure 8 there is the third non-overlapping transformation PRP with the root ascending by a minor third, while we close the example with the diatonic PRL transformation into the F minor triad. Other features in this example are the use of both root and inverted position triads. And somehow I always suffer from a concentration slip and introduce one or more errors. Here it is the wrong label with the second inversion A flat minor triad, for which I must apologize. Next we see an interesting new feature. At various points the chords are connected using augmented triads. The idea behind this is the following. Both major and minor triads may be called near even or near identity chords, since they need only one semitone to modify into a symmetrical augmented triad. For the major triad it means raising the chordal function 5, in case of the minor triad we lower the root. Using augmented triads as intermediate chords may be considered efficient voice leading. These concepts are discussed in detail in the Timoshko book A Geometry of Music, and I decided to use this approach here in order to insert enhanced harmonic interest. The voice leading is mostly stepwise. Note the occasional chromatically moving inner part and two cases of neighboring chordal function swaps in order to counter the overall descending trend. Finally, there is considerable contrary motion between outer parts. The diatonic PRL transformation at the end yields a plagal closing cadence over a tonic pedal point in the bass, and with an appoggiatura 9 to 1, that is D to C in the lead. Listen to this chord progression. Using Schillinger instrumental form techniques, also introduced in part 1 and 2 of this series, we create an orchestral setting with primary and secondary elements and instrumental parts. Here I use the combination of virtual acoustic and electronic instruments in a short composition. 
read along with the annotated reduced score. I repeated the exercise, but now for the starting point in C minor. Again, there will be third order compound Riemannian transformations only. This time, two out of the total of five are of the diatonic type, such as this one that uses the PRL transformation for a sidestep to the subdominant degree major triad F over C. Measure three starts with the first of the three symmetric root system transformations. Here the PRP move to the major triad on A, a minor third below. Then the PLP transformation brings us to the E major triad, with Schillinger symmetric system root cycle R minus 4i. In measure 9 we find the slide transformation, with C minor sliding into the major triad a semitone below. The progression closes with the second diatonic transformation, the R minus 5 root cycle with one common note that yields the major triad G on the dominant degree. The other features are similar to the example in major. We find chords in root and inverted position. Again, based on the idea of efficient voice leading and increased harmonic interest, I used augmented triads as intermediate chords, smoothing out the connections. Voice leading is dominated by stepwise motion, but this time there is less chromatic inner part movement. In three measures we find neighboring chordal function swapping. There still is contrary motion in the outer parts, but also note the two measures with parallel motion, including the parallel perfect fifths during the slide transformation, a voice leading solution that is forbidden in traditional harmony writing. The closing is a diatonic 151 cadence starting on the tonic chord in second inversion, as a brief dominant pedal point. Parts 2 and 3 close with a double ascending appoggiatura. Here's the audio. The approach in the instrumental form is similar to the major key composition example. Again I use the mix of acoustic and electronic instruments in an orchestral setting, but the mood is significantly different now. The meter is 9-8 and the example works towards a closing climax.
In episode 3 in this series, the focus was on third order compound Riemannian transformations. I presented all options in major and minor, depicting triad paths in the Tonet diagram. You saw the characteristics of these transformations, a classification based on the Schillinger diatonic and symmetric root system, and the equivalence relations between transformations in major and minor. Then we discussed two chord progressions that use third order transformations exclusively and saw how these were developed into short composition examples using instrumental form techniques. The next episode will demonstrate the application of various combinations of basic and compound Riemannian transformations in somewhat longer chord progressions and composition examples. In case you would like to see this video go viral in a healthy sense, push the thumbs up button and or subscribe to the channel. Alternatively, provide a link to or share this tutorial. If you would love to see error-free video tutorials in the future, consider supporting my quality control efforts and use the PayPal donation link in the description below. For now, thanks for watching and stay safe.